Oh, for joy, the chapters are short. Hi guys, this is Connie doing some more Connie Reads the Dogs of Winter. This is chapter 33, titled The Woods. Into the woods, the trail led us deeper and deeper. Never had I heard such quiet. The only sounds were my footfalls and the shuffling of the dogs. Everything was to be sniffed. Everything was to be peed upon. I had never imagined the world could hold so many trees. In my village, the only tree was the Yelka tree in the town square at Christmas time. In the city, the trees grew confined in corrals of brick and iron, as if they might walk away on their own and wreak havoc in the city. Here, the trees grew and soared and sighed and sang where they wanted. And birds, oh, the birds and their sweet music. For the rest of the day and the next, we followed the trails. They led us across small meadows dotted with bright yellow flowers, past clear streams, and through places where the trees hugged so close together the sun barely reached the forest floor. We drank from the streams and rolled in the grass. We napped to the drone of bees and the press of warm sun. My heart ached when I thought how much grandmother would have loved sleeping in sun-warmed grass. That second day, smoke dropped a dead rabbit at my feet. It was large and brown and soft as soft could be. Thank you, smoke, I said as I stroked the still warm body of the rabbit. But I can't eat this. I pushed the rabbit back to smoke. Smoke looked at me with puzzled eyes. He picked up the rabbit and tossed it at my feet. No, I said. Smoke sat and looked at me for a long time. He took in my short stubby fingers without claws he studied my small, useless nose and equally useless teeth. Smoke snorted. He picked up the rabbit and carried it to Little Mother and the puppies, who were watching from beneath a flowering bush. Smoke and Lucky and Ripped trotted off the trail. Uh, when they returned, they carried another rabbit and two squirrels. My stomach rumbled. I watched miserably as they ate. The third day was cool and overcast. Clouds spit rain. Once again, I watched in misery as the dogs ate mice for their meals. Even the puppies were more successful than I. I crawled beneath the umbrella of an evergreen's wide branches. I stuck my thumb in my mouth, then pulled it out. I am not a little baby, I said to the rain and the dogs beyond the branches. I got us away from the evil witch who eats children and puppies. I reached underneath my sweater and ragged shirt for the pages of my fairy tale book. Yes, just like that witch who tried to lure those children into her oven. The pages weren't there. I frowned and dug in the front of my pants. No pages there. And then my heart fell away down to my toes. My coat, I whispered. The pages were in the pocket of my coat, which was covering the body of grandmother. No, I cried as I flung myself from beneath the tree. How could I have forgotten? What will we do without the stories? I beat the bushes furiously with a stick. I knocked off the showy heads of flowers. Stupid, stupid boy, I said as I beat and smashed. You are useless and pathetic. I watched the puppies play tug of war with a squirrel tail. Even the puppies are smarter than you, I said. Little mother watched me with worry-filled eyes. She was torn between wanting to comfort me and fear of my anger and the swinging stick. Rip nipped at my leg. I swung my stick and brought it down hard on the little dog's shoulders. Rip yelped in pain. His eyes were huge with fear. He rolled over onto his back, exposing his throat and belly. He wet himself. The forest grew utterly silent, except for Rip's whimpers. The dogs all backed away from me as if I were a stranger. I dropped my stick and ran into the forest. I curled up under a bush and rocked myself back and forth. Everything is wrong. Everything is lost. Grandmother, the fairy tales, and look what you've done now, you stupid boy. I sobbed. You worthless cockroach. I buried my face against my arm and bit down. Hard. I bit my own arm until I drew blood. You hurt Rip, I said over and over as I continued to bite. Something warm and wet and rough stroked the side of my face. I lifted my head and looked into the smiling, worried eyes of Lucky. Just behind him stood Smoke. I'm sorry, I said. Lucky sniffed my arm. I am nothing but a stupid, pathetic boy. 
Gently, Lucky licked the blood from my arm. Finally, Smoke nudged my side. He pushed at my legs and knees. When I didn't obey his command, he pulled on my sleeve. I crawled from beneath the bush. What do I do? I asked the dogs. Smoke barked twice. Lucky wagged his tail. Let us show you, his eyes said. Please tell me I got that right. Yep. And that's the end of chapter 33. Be careful with that and enjoy. Please and thank you. And I will see you for the next installment. Have a great one.